Hello everyone, it's Silver. This is Dungeon Clawler. This is, well, it's a deck builder, really, but instead of dealing with cards and hands and things, you're building a deck of items that are then put into a claw machine that you will then use to actually do all the combat and stuff. Definitely a unique idea, something that I've personally never seen in terms of deck builders or roguelites or anything before. I've never seen a claw machine being used for gameplay, but here we are. The way that it works is pretty simple. You'll choose a character and a character starts with a sort of set of passive things that are unique to them as well as a set of items that they begin their deck with. And then you will go on an adventure. And most of what you're doing in this game is combat because that's where a lot of the mechanics are sort of firing in all cylinders and everything. But you do have a couple of other things to do like some puzzle rooms and things to complete. Well, really they're prize rooms, but the prize isn't always easy to get and sometimes comes with some negatives. So the puzzle part is figuring out how to actually get to what you want in the physics of a claw machine. So the combat has a very familiar framework. You will see enemies that have an intent above their heads, so you know exactly what they're gonna do when the turn ends. And you have by default two claws to spend for your turn. So your turn is actually two separate actions and you can use each claw to grab whatever you want from the machine and it will then toss it into the right side so that then it'll go down and you'll use it. So you use items by clawing them up into the output of the machine. Now the machine can only have a certain number of items in it at once. So once you get your deck to a certain size, it'll start to, you won't always have everything available at any given time. Basically you'll have to get some stuff from the machine first and then it populates uh, after every turn is over with some new stuff. You'll also see that there's a bunch of fluff in the machine. This stuff doesn't do anything on its own, but it can be modified with different fluids that you can actually fill the machine with, like water or ink or lava, and some of these will change the uh, behavior of the fluff, but otherwise it's just there to sort of bulk out the machine. So you'll look at the enemy intents and then decide what you want to do with your two claws. If there's a whole bunch of attacks coming your way, then you might want to grab some defensive items like shields and stuff. And every shield you grab will give you a certain amount of block. Otherwise, maybe you'll grab some daggers or some short swords or something to do some damage. And it all just sort of comes down to what you have in your machine that you can actually grab and use. And where all the complexity comes in is, of course, building your deck of items. What all do you want to be able to grab? Because some of these things interact with other bits in different ways. There are even items that aren't necessarily meant to be grabbed, per se. Like, there's an item that changes fluff into coins for you to spend. Or you might get something like, say, wood oil, which is an oil, like a bottle of oil, that changes all of these shields in a certain radius around it to have more blocks. So it makes your shields more valuable. But you don't want to actually collect the oil itself, because then it'll stop having its effect. You want it to be in the machine, providing its effect to a bunch of shields. Materials also matter. You'll see a little material symbol on the bottom left of an item's tooltip that shows you what it's made of. And this is important because you might get, say, a magnet instead of a claw that allows you to magnetize a bunch of stuff to it, but it'll only magnetize metal objects. So like wood and plastic don't do anything with it. And this is also important when it comes to the fluids because if you get your uh, machine, say, filled with water, all of the wood and plastic stuff will float, whereas all of the metal stuff will sink to the bottom. So this changes the physics a little bit in terms of what you can grab more easily and how items separate in the machine and stuff. There are also some items that do different things depending on what else they're grabbed with, making you want to grab them in different circumstances. Like say there's a big shield that doubles its block value if it's the only thing you grab. There's also a weapon that does a similar thing. It has much more attack power if it's the only thing you grab in that turn, which is difficult to do since you don't have direct control over the claw, right? You can control exactly where to swivel it and where to drop it, but other than that, you can't control when it grabs and what all it holds onto. So you gotta sort of try to maneuver it in just the right way where you think it'll probably only grab that item and nothing else, but you've got to, you're beholden to physics a little bit in terms of what it actually picks up. And as you go through the game, you'll learn to use these physics to your advantage once you figure out how it all works and how it all feels. And you can do some more advanced stuff like jostling items around with the edges of the claw to separate them. Or uh, moving the claw back and forth and then hitting the lower button before it's actually centered again so that it comes down at an angle so that you can grab stuff at an odd angle and maybe change exactly what it holds onto and things like that. It's all a bit more like advanced techniques, you could say, when it comes to just messing with the physics of the game. And and getting it to do what you want, which is a pretty cool idea. Having these physics be so integral to the game with it being a claw machine and all, but also having you being able to mess with the physics a little bit by, you know, filling it with water or ink 
or changing how you uh, lower the claw depending on how you jiggle it around first and stuff like that allows you to mess around with the physics some and actually feel like you're in pretty good control of the playing field. That is one of the big issues of a game like this of course being that it is entirely based around physics. You've got to make sure that the physics don't feel random and that it feels like the player is fully in control of them because if it feels too random then it's not going to feel skill based. It's going to feel like whether you win or lose is based entirely around a physics system that you have no control over which isn't good and it doesn't feel that way it actually feels like you do have control over everything pretty well and although the physics are still you know not fully under your control they still do what they want you can expect what they're doing and you can manipulate what they're doing with your own understanding of how the game works and it, it feels more skill based as a result it doesn't feel entirely rng there are also a couple of other things which will come across to make your experience a little bit easier. There are perks, for instance, which look like little bags with symbols on them. And these are passive abilities that give you all sorts of different effects, like making it to where uh, you clear off poison much faster, so poison barely affects you. Or if you only pick up one item with a claw, then it'll use it twice and some things like that. There are all sorts of different uh, passive effects you can get, and they're all really useful depending on the kind of build you're going for. So these are what you're going to want to combine with your deck of items to form your build. The most common way to find perks is to come across these little tumbler machines that uh, spin around and give you a choice between a couple of different perks and uh, you can you know choose whichever one you want. There are also other ways to get them sometimes after battles and things like the more difficult battles uh, but your average battle will give you a choice of items instead and you can of course choose to skip at any time if you don't want to add anything to your build at the moment but you will want to add things for a while at first because the more stuff you have the better uh, at first up to a certain point obviously just like any deck builder you want a lot of options but you don't want too many options that dilute the pool of stuff that you could potentially draw from thus making it harder to do what you need to do so it's all about balancing what you have in your deck and how much of that can be in your machine at any given time and in fact there are even perks that will increase the amount of stuff that's dropped in between turns as well as the maximum amount of stuff that you can have in your machine and there are even builds that are all about maximizing a ton of stuff like there's a character that's all about junk just having a whole bunch of stuff in their machine at any given time and there's different bonuses they get from it so it very much depends on the character you're playing what exact kind of build you want to go for. There's also uh, some characters that are a lot more specialized. You know, the main character that you start with is a pretty general character that can do a lot of different things. You can build them in a lot of different directions, but there are some that are more specific. Like there's a character that gets a magnet as their second claw. Instead of a normal claw, it's always a magnet. And obviously they're going to want a bunch of metal items to make the best use of this magnet. There's a vampire that gets life leech, but uh, cannot get armor. You can't armor yourself up. So he's all about like burst damage and repeated attacks to leech health as much as possible, as well as kill enemies before they're able to kill you. It's all about burst damage with that character. My favorite character is a squid in a fishbowl that has a tentacle as their second uh, claw and the tentacle just things sort of stick to it like suckers you know and uh, in water it spreads out and grabs a whole bunch more stuff so they are all about adding water and other fluids to their uh, machines so that they can use this tentacle more effectively and uh, this allows you to build them in several different directions but all of which are going to involve a lot of water. <laughs> I've managed to complete two runs successfully so far. I almost had a third one with the character that is all about uh, using a pet and building strength, the strength buff to buff their pet up. Uh, that one's a little bit more complicated to play, but it is really fun. Uh, she has like a cat that uh, attacks with her and you can use all sorts of different builds, I think, with her, really. But you really want to focus a lot on buffs, like building strength buffs and stuff, because they affect your pet as well. So she's a bit odd to play, but really fun. So yeah, with a couple of completed runs, I can say for sure that there is a good amount of variety already. This is, of course, early access, so there's going to be more. But as it currently stands, the variety is solid. Uh, there's a good enough amount of items to give you several different kinds of build that you could go for that are all viable, so that uh, you get a good idea of the sort of overall experience the game is going for and will expand on as it updates. And really, I think that's probably the biggest thing the game needs from its updates is just more stuff, because it's hard to say what is or isn't balanced or what character is or is not viable when you don't have, you know, a tremendous amount of items that that character could benefit from. So rather than worrying about individual character balance, I feel that it's more important right now to worry about item variety and perk variety. That way there you can sort of feel out which characters are good or bad based on having more stuff that you can actually do with them first. 
So I would definitely like to see a lot more item variety as the game updates, and I have a feeling that's probably going to be one of the main things the developer actually goes for. The game has a very similar feel to Backpack Hero, if you've ever played that. Obviously the mechanics are different, but the overall vibe and the overall sort of deck building experience is very similar to that game. And as that game benefited tremendously from extra item variety, I feel this game would in the exact same way. And in fact, I also feel that it would benefit tremendously from mod support. Uh, having Steam Workshop addable items and characters and stuff would be a pretty huge deal. So I would definitely like to see maybe towards the end of its early access campaign, some uh, modding support some official workshop support because I think the game would benefit tremendously from that. The other big thing that I would like to see as the game updates is more boss variety. Right now there are a fair number of bosses to face and you often have a choice between two of them so that helps, it gives you some extra choice depending on what builds you're going for, what you feel most confident in going up against. But I definitely feel that it needs more boss variety and I hope that more enemies and bosses is on the docket for the early access as it goes. But as it stands right now, Dungeon Crawler is a really fun deck builder that has a lot going for it and a really unique core gameplay mechanic that makes it stand out because it doesn't feel like anything else in the genre. It's also really cheap right now at only 10 bucks. That is not its sale price, that is its full price as it currently stands, and it is most definitely worth 10 bucks just to give it a couple of rounds and see how you get on with it. It's a lot of fun, and uh, its unique gameplay ideas I think will be helped out a lot by expanding its variety as its early access campaign goes on. So I definitely recommend it as it currently stands. It's cheap and cheerful and easy to recommend, so I'll put the link in the description below this video to the Steam Store page for Dungeon Kalala if you wish to check it out yourselves. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.